as I've tried to emphasize throughout these micro lectures, a computer can do two things, store state and manipulate that state. <clears throat> In this lecture, we begin to look at state more formally through a design tool called the state diagram. A state diagram helps us pictorially describe how a circuit's or computer's state changes over time. The majority of a computer's state is stored within the computer's memory devices such as the RAM, hard drives, and register file. And most state manipulations are performed by the arithmetic logic unit. This description of a computer is a little simplistic as we also need to have a device that can interpret instructions and tell the memory devices and arithmetic logic unit what to do. The control unit fetches instructions from the RAM and then tells the RAM and the arithmetic logic unit how to execute these instructions. To perform this role, the control unit must remember how to execute each instruction and what instruction to execute next. Consequently, the control unit will have its own state components and will progress through a series of states controlled by combinational logic. We describe this progression of states with a tool called a state diagram. On a state diagram, each bubble represents a unique state of a circuit, and each arrow shows us how the state will transition after each clock cycle. Then we assign a state encoding to each state to describe how that state is encoded within a set of flip-flops. In this example, because we have two states, we can uniquely encode both states with a single bit, or flip-flop. This bit is called a state variable. Because the flip-flop is edge-triggered, the state of the system can change only once per clock cycle. Finally, the combinational logic of the system manipulates the state and tells us how the state will transition on the clock edge. If we add another flip-flop to the system, we add one more state variable to the encodings, but we double the number of states that we can encode. As one more example, if we have three flip-flops, we have three state variables, and we can code up to eight unique states for the system. For the remainder of this lecture, we will focus on systems that contain exactly two flip-flops for simplicity's sake. The state machines we have shown so far follow a prescribed pattern and will execute the same instructions over and over. However, we can add inputs to the system that can alter the order of state executions. When we add an input into the system, we label the state transition arrows, put the value of the inputs to show which state transition will occur based on the input. For example, if we are in state 0, 0, we will transition to state 0, 1 on an input of 1, but we will transition to state 0, 0 on an input of 0. Notice that state transitions can return to the state from which they originated. In this example, the input acts as a toggle switch, where the circuit advances to a new state when the input is 1, but stays in the same state when the input is 0. Inputs to the system encode which state transitions should occur, much like how the flip-flops encode which state the system is in. If we add another input to the circuit, we would double the number of state transitions for each state from 2 per state to 4 per state. To simplify this diagram, here is a portion of the state diagram that shows the state transitions of only one state. In this example, the inputs encode which state the system will transition to. Finally, as we mentioned at the beginning, we want to use state machines to control other circuits oftentimes. If we add an output to the system, we show what the system outputs by placing it after the inputs. So, on some transitions, the system might output a 1, or it might output a 0. For every added output, we simply add another output bit to the transition. Notice that the outputs do not encode any information for this circuit, 
but they are simply information that is generated by the circuit. So they do not affect the number of states or the number of state transitions. To facilitate the interpretation of state diagrams, we normally add a legend or key that indicates where someone can find the various inputs, outputs, and state variables. We also will add an arrow to indicate what state the system starts in. To recap, let's review with one more state diagram. A state diagram has states represented by bubbles. State encodings encoded with the state variables. State transitions represented by arrows and the inputs and outputs that label those state transitions. We must also indicate the system start state and a key for interpreting the state diagram. If you want to minimize the size of your circuit, then if you have S states, then you want to use log base 2 of S flip-flops to encode your states. If you have I inputs, then you need to have two of the I state transitions for every state.